Hello everyone and welcome back to Vector in Motion. In the previous video, we covered the basics of the method of sections. And in this video, we are going to cover some advanced stuff. We are going to solve a truss problem which can't be solved without applying a technique. We are going to solve this problem which you see on your screen. We have to find force in members EH and GI using the method of sections. The first step is to draw a free body diagram of the entire truss and we will replace the pin support here with two forces in horizontal and vertical direction and a single force in vertical direction would replace the roller support here. The free body diagram will look like this. There are no applied forces on the truss in horizontal direction and therefore the x component of the reaction force at A would be 0 and therefore I have not shown it in the diagram. Ax is 0. We take moment of all the forces about point P and we write the moment equation. Ay produces clockwise moment and these three external forces cause anti-clockwise moment and you get this expression which yields Ay equal to 50 kilonewtons and by summing the forces in y direction and equating it to 0 we get Py equal to 100 kilonewtons. Ay is 50 kilonewtons and Py is 100 kilonewtons. Next, we need to pass a section so as to cut the truss into two parts. Let us pass a section like this which intersects the members EH and GI like this. But there is a problem. This section intersects four members EH, FH, FI and GI. And recall from the previous video that our section should cut at most three members and here we find that this section is intersecting four members. Can we figure out another section which cuts only three members like this, like this? No. Apparently we can't find a section which will cut the truss into two parts and only three members would be intersected. Such a section is apparently not possible. So let us proceed with this section only, which we call A, A prime, hoping that we will find some workaround and find a solution. So we draw a free body diagram of the left portion of this truss left to the section A, A prime. So here is the ABD of the left part of the truss. Since this section intersects four members, we expose the internal forces of these four members and they point away from the pins because our assumption is that these members are in tension to begin with and these unknown forces are FEH, FFH, F, Fi and Fgi. These four forces are along the axial direction of the members because these members are two force members and they can sustain only axial forces. Now we just have three equations to solve for these four unknowns. We have less number of equations, only three equations, two for force balance and one for moment balance and we have four unknowns here. So we shall not be able to solve for these four unknowns using only three equations. However, let us examine this in detail. These two forces meet at point H. Similarly, these two forces meet at point I, this point. If you write moment equation about point H, 
these two forces will get eliminated and our moment equation will have these two unknowns. And if you write moment equation about this point I, these two forces would get eliminated and our equation will have these two unknown forces. So, they are not solvable. But think of a hypothetical case. Suppose three forces out of the four meet at a point and we write a moment equation about that point. Then our equation will have only single unknown and that will be the fourth unknown, in which case that will be solvable. There is another possibility. If three of the forces are, let us say, in horizontal direction and the fourth is orthogonal to this. So, if we write an equation in this axis, summation of forces in, in this axis, these three forces will get eliminated and we shall have an equation with only one unknown and then that will be solvable. So, let us explore if we can have a different section which cuts through members in such a manner that we can write a moment equation or force balance equation which will have a single unknown. So, let us see if we have a different section like this. This is B, B prime. This section intersects four members, but let us see how the free body diagram of the left portion of this section looks like. Here is the ABD of the part of the truss that is left to section B, B prime, and this section cuts the members EH, EF. F G and G I and therefore we expose the forces here F E H F E F F G F and F G I. These are the four forces of the four members which get exposed and they are acting away from the pins because we assume that the members are in tension to begin with and now notice the direction of these four unknown forces. These three forces meet at point E and if we write a moment equation about E, all these three forces would get eliminated from our equation and our equation will have only a single unknown F G I and therefore from a single equation we will be able to get the value of this unknown force. Similarly, these three forces FGI, FGF and FEF meet at point G and if we take moment of all the forces about point G, these three forces would get eliminated and our equation will have only single unknown FEH and that would be then solvable. So, despite the fact that we have four unknowns and we just have three equation, the orientation of the forces is such that these two unknown forces are still solvable and this precisely is the trick of deciding the section in such a manner that we can write an equation having a single unknown. So, let us write the moment equation about point G. So, moment about point G and that will be equal to minus 50 times 10. This force will have a clockwise moment and its moment now would be this distance AG that is 10 meters and the moment of FEH would again be clockwise and its moment now would be the distance EG that is 6 meters. So, we have minus 50 times 10 minus FEH times 6 equal to 0. The force FEF, FGF and FGI will have no moment about 
point G. So F E H will work out to minus 83.33 and the minus sign indicates that our assumption that the forces are tensile is incorrect and force in that member is in fact a compressive force. So we can say F E H is 83.33 kilonewtons C standing for a compressive force. Now next we will take the moment about point E and our moment equation will look like this. The moment of 15 kilonewtons force about point E would still be minus 50 times 10 and that of force FGI would be anti-clockwise about point E and the moment now would be the distance GE which is 6 meters. So we have the equation minus 50 times 10 plus FGI times 6 equal to 0. This equation will yield FGI equal to 83.33 which means the force in the member GI is 83.33 kilonewtons. This is kilonewtons. And because of the positive sign, this is tensile. So that's our answer. So the force in members EH and GI is 83.33 kilonewtons compressive and 83.33 kilonewtons tensile respectively. Thanks for watching and see you next time.